Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Josh Roberts, and I'm a consultant here at Ibis Incorporated. Um, I'd like to thank you for joining us for today's webcast on what are analysis cubes for Excel and why do you need them. At the end of the webinar, I'll have a slide with an email where you can uh, send any questions that you have. Um, but until then, let's go ahead and get started. So analysis cubes for Excel are a business intelligence tool that provide quick and easy access to system data with the ability to leverage Excel to enhance sound business decisions. Um, they're a form of ad hoc reporting and should be a supplement to existing reporting systems such as Management Reporter um, as opposed to a standalone reporting tool. So why should I use analysis cubes? Um, first and foremost, everyone within an organization um, can, provide, can get some value out of using the cubes. Um, from managers to C-level executives to data analysts, everyone can, has a reason to use the cubes. Um, analysts can quickly dive in there and, and get to data or answer a question quickly or find, a, find an answer to anything they're looking for. Managers or executives can have dashboards or reports built where they can quickly come in, change a filter, change a parameter, and, and have a quick answer of the, the nature of their business at any point in time. Um, another reason is data visibility. Um, like I mentioned before, the cubes are an ad hoc reporting tool, meaning they can, reports can be generated on the fly um, very efficiently. You don't have to wait on IT or someone else to build a report for you. Um, you can connect straight to the data within Excel and, and get going. Um, another reason is consistency validation. Um, the cubes are a great way to make sure that the data that you're seeing in your other forms of reports um, is, is accurate and reliable. Um, I'll show you some ways later on in a demo of how you can verify that what you're looking at everywhere else is accurate. Additionally, the cubes leverage native Excel functionality, so pivot tables, charts, graphs, formulas, everything within, <clears throat> everything within the cubes relies on Excel. So users typically have a little more experience with Excel, um, the management reporter or GP, so if that is the case, then they can get going quickly and, and be comfortable. And finally, the cubes are included in your GP download. So if you've purchased uh, Microsoft Dynamics GP, you actually already have the cubes, um, and you won't have to go any further to get them. Um, but on that note, um, you know, I mentioned you do have the cubes with your package. Ibis should help you install the cubes. Um, not, not all cubes are made equal. So Ibis has been doing this for a few years now, and we've learned over, over time that there's some bugs that come with the cubes straight from Microsoft, um, and we've developed some modifications to those cubes. Uh, the data wouldn't be wrong, but it's just a couple of quirky things that we've improved what, uh, what you get. We've also created some custom cubes. We've created fixed assets and project accounting um, that do not come out of the box. Um, also, the install can be sort of um, complicated to the uninitiated. I mean, you know, we've done this so many times that it, it would be more beneficial for you. So now that we kind of know what they are and that they're a reporting tool, I want to take a moment to kind of go over how it gets from your ERP system into Excel. So it starts in your source database, so a transaction entry within. Um, in this case, and for the purpose of this demonstration, we're using Microsoft Dynamics GP. Uh, the cubes are available for Dynamics AX, but for, again, for us, we're using GP. So it starts within GP, um, a receivables entry, something like that. That gets written to your company database. From there, Integration Services would copy the pertinent information from that database and put it into a new data warehouse. Um, the data warehouse is created during the installation, and it's a single solitary database um, that houses tables from multiple companies. So it's one database that pulls all of your different companies uh, into one location for quick and efficient reporting. Um, once it's in the data warehouse, it uses analysis services. Um, analysis services holds all the logic of the cubes. So it's going to link important pieces together such as payables documents to their pertinent vendor. Finally, that gets put into Excel. So as an end user, all you do is you come into Excel, you connect to the data connection, and you pick the cube that you want, and you're, you're on the ground running. Um, everything in the background has already happened, and you don't have to worry about that. You just open up Excel and get going. So here's some topics that we're going to discuss in the demo. Um, we're going to go have an overview of the pivot tables. Um, how to connect to them. I'm going to show you guys the field list, um, the ability to drill through, some filtering and sourcing techniques, um, slicers, data bars, charts, cube formulas, and finally a couple of dashboards. 
But one more slide before we get into the demonstration, I wanted to show you guys the pivot table field list. So when you get into Excel, you connect to your um, data connection, you import your pivot table, you're going to have a pivot table within the worksheet, and then on the far right, you're going to have a pivot table field list. Um, this field, li field list is going to contain measure groups and dimensions. Uh, measure groups are values, so they're going to be hours, quantities, or dollars. They're going to be things that have an amount to them. Beneath the measure groups are going to be dimensions, um, and these are just master records from your source system. And each dimension is going to have hierarchies that contain attributes. So basically what that means is that you could click and drill down from each dimension to get down to more finite attributes. So you'll notice on the screen that in the pivot table field list at the bottom of the little blue box where it says master date, it's kind of hidden, but it's been expanded to show the different hierarchies. So beneath master date, there's date, date by month, and quarter by year. Um, and then finally, that's been drilled down, uh, the more fields option's been drilled down to show the individual attributes that make up that dimension. And I know it seems kind of complicated now, but once you get in there and, and, and see, um, it'll let, make a little more sense to you. Um, and it's just standard pivot table logic if you've seen those before. So let's go ahead and get into the cubes um, and have a little demonstration for you. Um, I have a workbook that I've made here that has a few blank sheets, um, and then towards the end it has a couple of sheets with some stuff already in there. The first thing I'm going to do is show you guys how easy it is to connect to a brand new um, Analysis Cubes connection. So to do that, uh, when you're in there, click a cell, and then go to Data from Other Sources. Um, there's going to be a little drop-down, and you can choose from Analysis Services. And that's kind of easy to remember because it actually has a little cube in there already. So you click that, and the Data Connection Wizard is going to appear. Um, now you're going to have to know your server name. That's something that your IT department or your Microsoft partner should be able to provide for you. So you're going to enter your server name. And the cubes actually use Windows authentication. Um, at the very end of our presentation, I'm going to go over security. Um, but they use Windows authentication, so we're just going to leave that as defaulted in there and click Next. Once you hit the right server, you're going to have an option to choose from these different cubes. Um, for this first one, we're going to do financials. You can connect to any of these. So I'm going to have financials highlighted and click next. And here it's going to give you um, the name that the connection is going to be stored in. Um, I'm for, for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to do financials demo. Um, you can name this whatever you want. And you can also choose where it's going to be stored. By default, it's in your my, it's, uh, in our my documents. But if you were on a shared network, you could put this on a shared location so that other people could come in and quickly access this same connection without having to go through the wizard again. So I'm going to make my file name financials demo. I'm going to name it my friendly name financials demo as well so that it's easy to find. From there, I'm going to click finish. And it's going to ask you if you want a pivot table report, pivot chart, power view report, or only create the connection. Um, I want to go ahead and do a pivot table report. And then it's also going to ask you where you want to put it. And I had cell A1 highlighted, so I'm just going to leave that there and click OK. So, hopefully you can see that you have now you have the pivot table on the left side of the Excel window, and on the right you have the pivot table fields list. You know, I apologize if you have to scroll across the screen, but it should be there for you. Um, so the first thing you'll see, I'm going to collapse this so we can see everything. You're going to have your measure groups, and then you're going to have all of your dimensions, like I mentioned before. Um, within these dimensions, you can open them up to see the different hierarchies all the way down to the individual attributes. Um, the first thing I want to show is just a general overview as well as some drill through functionality. So, let's look at GL amount. Um, okay, I should also note that you can check whatever you want to look at and it's going to put it into the report or you can click and drag from here down into these different boxes. Um, another thing to note the measured groups or the values can only be in this value portion of the pivot table. Um, the different dimensions can be placed in the filters, rows, or columns, wherever you want to look um, for whatever type of analysis you're doing. So we have GL transaction amount highlighted. Um, I also want to look at the accounts by category. So I can either check this and it's going to put it in the row, or I can choose to put it in a column or a filter. 
um, I actually want to put it in a row like it wanted me to. And I'm also going to put in a master date column. So you can see how quickly and easy it is to, to access your GL transaction amounts. And this is going to show me my accounts by category and the transaction amount for each year that the system has data. Um, so just a precursor to all the numbers that you're going to see, it's, it's Fabricam company data um, that comes with Dynamics GP. So some of the numbers are a little, they're not what you want to see or they, or they, they favor, but they're not very realistic. Um, so keep that in mind as we go through that some of these numbers are going to be strange and, and I understand that and I apologize. <clears throat> so one of the best things to do once you're here is you can click the little plus signs and drill down into the different, um, more detailed categories. So beneath assets, we have current assets or fixed assets. If I go down even further in current assets, I have all these different types from accounts receivable and cash to works in process. Finally, if I want to go all the way down, I get down to the individual account level that shows each account that's classified as accounts receivable. You'll notice, too, that I have these little plus signs in the column labels as well. So I can expand those to go down even further. So you'll, you'll see here that I, I expanded 2013 and only quarter four came up. That's because only quarter four had um, transaction amounts. I can expand that even further. It was only December. It was actually only December 31st. So let's say from here, I get down and I'm looking at this 20699 amount. And I'm thinking, you know, what, what's going on here? I want to know more details about this. Well, I can highlight it and right click, then click additional actions and drill through transaction detail. What that's going to do is open a new sheet within the Excel workbook and it's going to have more information regarding that transaction. So it's going to have my company ID, the date, um, the account segments, the full account number, it's going to have the account description, a debit amount, and really it would have a, a document number, master number, and then description. And that could be where you can find more information um, I don't have any for this one, but that a lot of times can give you more information and then you can say, oh yeah, that's right, okay. Um, once you're done looking at the drill through, you can just right click on that new sheet and click delete. And it's going to remove it from your report and you're back in your pivot table. So this is just a brief overview. Um, we're actually going to go through a few more different cubes and, and do a couple other things. But I just wanted to show you guys the drill through functionality first. So let's go ahead and move over to a new worksheet. Um, and this one's blank. And we're actually going to connect to the purchasing queue. Um, now, from here on out, I'm going to connect to existing connections as opposed to going through the wizard every, every time for simplicity's sake. So let's say you've already worked with the purchasing cube and you have a connection built. You want to go back into it and create a new table. Where you're going to go to data and then click existing connections. Like I said, I want the purchases test, so I'm just going to highlight this. And it could be named whatever your friendly name was that you chose when you set it up, when you set up the connection initially. Excuse me. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up. And again, I want a pivot table report, so that's fine. So what I want to show you guys with the purchasing cube is how you can sort through some of the top vendors um, by different amounts, as well as how the cubes can be used for data consistency. Um, so let's see. First, we want to take a look at the quantity purchase detail. I mean, this is going to be item quantities. Um, we want to filter on the date. So before we had date as a column, this time we're going to put it as a filter. And then we're going to choose vendor number. So beneath the vendor dimension, um, I'm actually going to bypass all the hierarchies and just go down to more fields and choose an individual attribute um, and in this case, it's going to be vendor number. So in my pivot table, you're going to see that for each vendor and their corresponding number, these are the quantity purchased and details for those vendors. Um, from here, let's say that in most cases you would have you know, thousands of vendors, hundreds of vendors. You would have many more than this. Um, let's say you want to quickly see who the top vendor is by quantity purchased detail. Within the queue, you can just right click sort, largest to smallest, and it's going to very quickly show you that Green Lake 001 as our top vendor based on quantity purchased. And this is more beneficial if you have many more vendors um, instead of just 
uh, 12 or so. Let's say that you are in here and you have vendor number, but you also want to see vendor name. Vendor number doesn't mean much to you. You can come back over here to your pivot table fields and pull in vendor name as well. And it's going to show you the vendor name. Now, a lot of times um, people don't like this because it brings it in and the line beneath it and actually makes a duplicate value in, this, in the uh, purchase detail column. There's actually a quick workaround for that. Back in your pivot table fields list, on your row, if you click on the top one, in this case it's vendor number, and go to field settings, a couple little things here, change your subtotals to none, and then on the layout and print tab, show items in tabular form. Click OK. It's going to put that vendor name to the right of the number and show you um, it's a little more easy to read and understand. So now that you have the name in there, you're like, okay, that, you know, that makes more sense. I want to use that instead. You can just go ahead and take out vendor number entirely and just remove it from your fields list and it takes it out of your pivot table. So now you have vendor name and quantity purchase detail. Let's say you only want to see the top three vendors. Within the pivot table, you can filter on labels or values. Labels would be anything um, pertaining to the row label so that you could change it to where it's only vendors that start with C, or only vendors that contain company. Values would be anything with these, so you could say only a value greater than this, less than this, equal to this, etc. Let's say you want to see only the top three vendors by quantity purchase. That would be a value filter. So click this little drop down next to row labels, come down to value filters, and then top 10. <clears throat> by default, it's going to show top 10. 10 is going to default in there. You could change that to whatever you like. I'm going to do top three and click OK. Now my table is only going to show the top three vendors. It's Like I said before, it's a little better when you have more vendors than just 12 or so, but this can give you an idea of what it's capable of. If anytime you have a filter and you're ready to get out of it, um, next to row labels or wherever you are, you can click the little icon and then uh, select clear filter from vendor name. That's going to remove that filter and put us back to where we were. Now you remember before when we started this cube we put a date filter in here. Um, up until this point it's been on all which is it's going to show quantity purchase detail all time. Um, let's say you want to filter and only look at a specific period of time. Let's say you only, only want to look at one quarter. Again this, this test company data kind of goes from the past to the future. Um, so I know that there's stuff in quarter one of 2017, so I'm just going to select that quarter. This is going to show me everything that was purchased within that filter. So one other thing I want to show you in the purchasing cube um, is how you can use the cubes to make sure that you're uh, reporting data consistently. So let's go ahead and select all time so we have all of our numbers in here. And instead of <clears throat> viewing vendor names specifically in our row, Let's choose the vendors by location hierarchy. That's going to change it so that it lumps all of our vendors within their um, location. And you can drill down from here to see from country all the way down to city to company. But what I want to show here is the fact that we have a United States and a USA row label. Somewhere along the line, someone started entering vendors um, using a United States um, country as opposed to USA. So if you were historically running a smart list for a report that you do and you filter on location where location equals USA, you're going to be missing everything that comes in under location equals United States. Um, so this is one way that the cubes can kind of validate your other reporting metrics to ensure that what you, what you think you're looking at is actually full and accurate. <clears throat> I'd like to go to a new cube now and show some more sorting options, um, the use of data, data bars, and then pivot charts. Um, for this one, I'm going to connect to an existing connection. <clears throat> and I'm actually going to connect to my receivables queue. And I'm going to insert a pivot, pivot table report just like before. So 
I'd like to take a look at revenue. I want to see customer name. And I want to filter on master date. So I'm actually going to select it as, as opposed to checking it and drag it down into the filter um, parameter. So this is showing me all of my customers, um, the revenue for each, based on all time. And again, this, this date filter can be adjusted so that you see revenue for a specific date or a quarter or a year. Um, this is a little more beneficial. Now if I sort from largest to smallest, it's going to you know, provide a little more information because there's more data here. Let's say I want to find a customer, and I know that their business has the word Pulaski in it. I know that it's Pulaski Incorporated or something like that, but I'm not entirely sure. But I want to see where they are and how much revenue they have. I can click on the little drop down next to row labels, and then click on the label filters, and then select contains. Like I said, I know that it has the word Pulaski in it, but I don't know the rest of their company name. So I'm going to say contains Pulaski and click OK. It's going to show me all, all customers that have the word Pulaski in it. In this case, I only have one. It's Pulaski Enterprises. And it's going to show me their amount of revenue. So again, I'm done. I know what I, I, I saw what I wanted to see. I want to remove this filter. Click the little drop down, select clear filter. It's going to bring back everything in here. Now let's say I only want to see customers that have revenue over $50,000. Well, that would be a value filter. So I'll select the drop down, choose a value filter, and then select greater than. And I want to see where revenue is greater than 50,000. Click OK. This is going to show me my customers, and only my customers that have revenue over 50,000. So you can kind of see just how easily and quickly it is to, to get you know, fast answers if, if someone has a question or if you want to do some sort of analysis. So let's clear that filter. And like before, when we chose the top three, let's choose the top 10 this time. So again, that's a value filter, top 10. So it's top 10 by revenue. And select OK. And it's going to show me my top 10 by revenue all time. Um, let's say I want to see top 10 by revenue for different time periods. Let's say I want to see quarter one of 2017. Can come up to my master date filter, drill down from 2017, select quarter one, and hit OK. And it's going to show me my revenue for each customer within that quarter, and it's going to show me my top 10. So this is how much I had for each customer um, within quarter one of 2017. Again, I can change this to the entire year of 2017 if I, if I wanted to. It's going to update dynamically and show me um, revenue in 2017 per customer. So let's go ahead and bring this back to all. And I want to show you um, the use of data bars. So data bars are, are a, a nice visual um, to, sh to kind of show more than just the numbers. It can show an outline of what's going on. So that's a conditional formatting tool. So I'm going to, within my pivot table, highlight all my cells that I'm interested in. Go to the home ribbon up top. Choose conditional formatting, data bars, and then pick the one that I want. <clears throat> and it's going to fill in. Nice little data bar so you can kind of see where everything stacks up together. <clears throat> Just like clearing your filters, you can easily remove conditional formatting. Back up to conditional formatting. You can manage your rules to change, or you can clear them. And I actually want to cl clear from this entire sheet. Now, I'd like to show you how to build a pie chart showing the top five customers by revenue. Um, so to do that, we need to change our filter from top 10 to top 5. And then we can insert the chart. So to insert a chart, make sure that you're highlighted within your pivot table. Go up to the Insert ribbon. Pivot chart. Pivot chart again. And then choose what type of chart you want. Um, for this case, I want a pie chart. You can choose different types of ones, three-dimensional ones. I'll just go with the standard. 
I'm going to have that highlighted and click OK. And it's going to put the pivot table right there in my worksheet. Now, it's going to default with no value. So you can see that the top five customers have a name and an um, associated color, but it's kind of hard to see the dollar amounts. Let's say you want to see the dollar amounts. You can right click on that pie chart, select Add Data Labels, and it's going to show you the dollar amount as well. Now, not only is this a nice visual, but this pivot chart is linked to this pivot table. So whenever in data changes over here, it's going to change in the chart as well. So if we were to go back and choose um, a different date filter, not only will it update my pivot table, but it's going to update my pie chart as well. <clears throat> so now that we've seen pivot tables um, and charts, I want to go ahead and show how you can also use formulas. So you can connect to the data via pivot tables, which is typically the easier way, um, but many users also like to use formulas. So they're just Excel formulas that are connecting to the data and pulling in all of those numbers um, that way as opposed to using the pivot table. Um, a lot of times when I'm building a report or a dashboard um, that ultimately I know is going to be in formulas, I create it first in a pivot table and then convert that to formulas. So we're going to do that now. Um, but before that, I want to say some, a couple other reasons why um, people prefer formulas over pivot tables. Um, it's much easier to format. Um, so a lot of times when you go and you change a data filter or parameter within the pivot table, it kind of messes up um, the layout of your report, and it can kind of make the cells wider or bigger and kind of throw everything else off. And also, if you have multiple pivot tables within one um, Worksheet, they oftentimes can go on top of each other and actually error out. So that's why a lot of times people prefer to use the formulas just because it's easier to format. Um, you can also combine formulas and the amounts that they create with other Excel formulas and macros to build just more complex um, reports. So like I said, when I'm, when I'm using formulas, typically I'll build a pivot table first and then convert that to formulas. So let's go ahead and connect to a sales table. <clears throat> and let's say we want to look at profit detail value, customers by location, and we want to see that for each year. So it's going to bring in my pivot table and it's going to show each location that I have for customers as well as year and the profit detail amount for each year per location of customers. Um, to get this to formulas, I can just have my pivot table selected, come up here to the Analyze ribbon, select OLAP Tools, and then click Convert to Formulas. It's going to convert that entire pivot table to Excel formulas. So if you take a look, what were the values are now a formula that's referencing my sales test data connection, and it's pulling in profit detail, which was the value selected in the pivot table, for New Zealand customer location for the year 2017. And these cells that it's referencing are also formulas themselves. They're a cube member formula. So this is referencing my sales test connection, and it's drilling down from my customers to the US location. Same thing for the years. They're a cube member referencing sales test that's drilling down from date to an individual year. So before, you know, I said people prefer formulas because it's easier to format. Now I can come in here and I can change different portions of my table to however you like your financial statements to, to appear. And I can do this without messing up my pivot table or changing um, everything else in the report. And it's just cleaner and a little neater. Um, a lot of times, people like to use a combination of the pivot tables and formulas to, to create their reports. Um, the next thing I want to show are slicers. Um, many people are familiar with slicers. Um, they're an easy way to change multiple table or filter on multiple tables, um, as well as show your current filter state. Um, they also allow you 
to slice data on your own without having to reach out to anyone else to build a report. So I've moved over to this slicer sheet, um, and I have quantity sold items, um, profit by customer, and then profit by salesperson. And right now, none of these have a date filter set on them, so they're showing all time. What I want to show is how you can insert a slicer on a date, and it's going to change the date for all three of these all at the same time just by clicking a single button. So to do that, select one of your pivot tables, then on the Analyze ribbon, insert the slicer, and you can choose what you want to insert the slicer on. Um, and in this case, like I said, I want to do it on the date. Uh, more specifically, I want to do it on master date year. So it's going to insert this little button that I can click and show each year specifically, and it will update my quantity sold by item. Now you'll notice right now it's only changing this first pivot table. And that's because that's the, the table that I inserted the slicer on to begin with. Before I said I wanted to show it so that it reflects all three of these. To do that, highlight your slicer, and then on the options ribbon up top, choose report connections. And you can see this year report connection is only selected on pivot table seven. Well, I want to put it on pivot table 11 and pivot table 8. And I know that, that that's these two because they show on this sheet known as slicers, which I have labeled down here. So I select everything else, click OK. Now when I click a different button on my slicer, it's going to update everything. It's going to update this pivot table, my customer name pivot table, and my profit by salesperson. All with one button. It's also easy for me to see what year I'm looking at because it's highlighted within my slicer. So now that we, re we reviewed how to connect to the cubes, pivot tables, formulas, and slicers, I'd like to show you a couple different dashboards that kind of utilize all of those things in one place. <clears throat> the first dashboard I have um, it has three pivot tables and then a little um, income statement that I've built. Everything on this sheet references this slicer up here that says quarter. So when I change something here, it's going to change everything. Now, <clears throat> this chart is my top five customers by revenue, states by revenue, sales rep by revenue. And then this little income statement is going to show each month within the quarter, as well as your sales, cost of goods sold, profit, and ultimately net income. This is great because someone can come in and just quickly change, hey, how do we do in quarter two versus quarter one, and show the differences or discrepancies. It's also very neat um, and just easy to display everything, it looks good. If I come down here and choose quarter three, you'll see that even though it says top five sales rep by revenue, it's only showing two sales rep. That's because in that particular quarter, only two sales representatives had um, actual sales. Quarter four, it was three. If you look, this income statement is actually referencing some hidden sales that are using formulas to pull in these data figures. Um, so you could easily construct a pivot table to show this, convert it to formulas, and then bring it over here so that you can easily format and not have to worry about your report layout getting messed up when you change the date. So I have one other dashboard, and this, is, this dashboard is um, exclusively formulas. Everything here with the exception of the revenue by sales rep all time and quantity sold item by item all time, reference this standalone um, date filter up here. When I come in and change it, I can choose any quarter, month, down to the specific date, however I want. It's going to show me my financial information as of that date. So it's going to update my year-to-date figures, my balance sheet, my revenue, cost of sales, OPEX, and accounts receivable all up to date to that specific time. So let's say, you know, it's later in the year. You're ready, you wanna see up to September 2017. That's including September. It's gonna update my entire dashboard to reflect that specific date parameter. And this would be a good one to build where you come in as you go on throughout the year um, and you could bring it to whatever date you're currently at. And it's gonna show you all of your information up to that point in time.
You'll notice too that over here in the year-to-date revenue, there's some little icons. Um, these are called icon sets that you can set to give you a little display of how you're doing. Um, and I've actually changed some of the parameters to warn you, to warn the company about revenue. So January through March was a green check mark. They met their um, you know, budget or, or the revenue figure that they wanted to obtain. But in April and May, um, they didn't quite get there. There was kind of some questionable marks like, hey, this isn't what we want, you know, what's going on? And then in June and July, they performed poorly um, and did not meet the revenue they wanted to see. So you can insert all kind of icon state, all kind of icon sets, excuse me, like this, to just show a nice display of where you are without, you know, getting into the number or trying to remember what your budget was or trying to remember what you wanted it to say. You can just have a quick visual of where you are. So a lot of times you can combine um, formulas like this, little charts like this, as well as other pivot tables and charts all in one sheet for a very complex and dynamic report that can all be changed by the single click of a button. Um, and that's very valuable um, for managers or executives that have limited time and they don't want to have to rely on someone else to generate their report. They can just come in and do it themselves. So with that, that kind of concludes the demo. Um, I want to hop back over to our PowerPoint and go through just a couple more slides here. So just as a recap, um, within the demo, we went through how you could filter on labels, values, or more options. Um, we showed how within um, your, your transactions or your pivot tables, you can drill through down to more detailed information. Um, we showed the importance of slicers and how you can quickly and easily see your filter state um, and change the filter for multiple tables all at once. Um, we showed data bars. Um, like icon sets, they're a nice visual um, to compare. We showed how you can import charts um, that are linked to the pivot table and change as you update it. And then we showed some dashboards. Um, the final thing I wanted to talk about was the security. So the analysis cube security is all controlled through Windows authentication. So you could have analysts or, or members of your team that aren't GP users, they could access the cubes and generate and build reports based off the data within there. Um, and the roles, <clears throat> the, the security is role-based. So you could only give users certain access to certain cubes. So if you only want uh, the accounts receivable department to have access to the receivables cube, you can control that very easily. You can control the security as well down to the dimension level. So for example, you could allow only one customer class for a specific sales team member. So they could only see their customer information. And they could, as a sales rep, generate reports and see where they are and see how they're doing. And, and that kind of supports how it's ad hoc reporting on the fly. So with that, that concludes our webinar. Um, if you have any additional questions, please email info at ibisync.com and include the subject line, Analysis Cube Webinar. So I'd like to thank you for attending today's webcast and have a great day. Thank you.